So if we live in the south, or maybe in a rainforest, we know exactly what humidity feels like. But how is humidity important for our reptiles? Let's start with fact number one for the day. You can't actually see humidity. Our reptile room that we're standing in right now looks perfectly clear. In fact, I can see Tim just fine. No fog, no mist, no haze. But believe it or not, the humidity in our reptile room right now is really high. In fact, I think, yep, it's about 60%. But how is that possible? Isn't humidity all about water being in the air? Well, yes and no. What humidity actually is, is the amount of water vapor that's in the air. Now you're probably saying, Tim, doesn't my humidifier put out water vapor? I can see it's putting out fog, clear as day. You're close, but not quite. You see, we know that things can be solids, liquids, and gases, and we are totally used to water as a liquid, or ice as a solid form of water, but water can also be a gas. And when it's a gas, you can't see it. It's completely invisible. The fog that your fogger puts out actually evaporates and raises the humidity in the room. So the gas version of water that makes up part of the air that we call water vapor is what humidity actually is. It's not the amount of visible water you can see floating around like what gets put out of your fogger. It's the amount of that fog that evaporates into the air. Number two, humidity is only caused by evaporation. Okay, let's go back to our middle school science classes in the water cycle. First, we have water in the environment. Outside, it would be in the rivers, lakes, and the ocean. As the water is warmed, it evaporates by turning into water vapor and entering into the air. Over time, as more and more water vapor enters the air, it condenses back into visible water in the form of clouds, dew, or fog. We can see this in so many ways in our day-to-day -day life. Think about it. If you spray a hose on the pavement outside on a really hot day, you can almost watch that water evaporate off the ground. Now, what's really cool about this is that if you took a humidity measurement with a tool we call a, hy a hygrometer, and you held that right above that puddle as it evaporated, the humidity would be much higher right there than it is in the surrounding air. And that's because humidity is directly caused by evaporation. Another part of seeing the water cycle on a hot day is to see condensation. We know that if we put a glass of ice cold water outside on a humid day, we see what a lot of people call sweat on the glass. This isn't sweat at all. It's condensation and it's condensation caused directly by the next item on our list. Number three, humidity and temperature are directly related. Have you ever noticed how hard it is to keep the humidity high in your terrarium, especially if you keep a species of animal that likes really high basking temperatures during the day? You missed, 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 missed in the morning, and then by noon the humidity is completely dropped. Put simply, the warmer the air is, the more water vapor that the air can hold. What's happening in Jack's example isn't that the water is magically coming out of the air. We know it didn't magically rain in the terrarium. What's happening has to do with the way that we measure humidity, and it's called relative humidity. You'll notice on your humidity measuring tool, called a hygrometer, that humidity is shown as a percentage. This percentage is the relative humidity. It's a relationship between how much water the air can actually hold and how much it's currently holding. Let's show this in a little bit different way. In the morning at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, let's say that the air can hold 50 total molecules of water. Now our morning misting evaporates 40 molecules of water into the air. 40 molecules over our 50 total capacity gives us 80% humidity. That's pretty darn good for our tropical species. But as the day goes on, the temperature in our terrarium has risen now to 80 degrees, and now it can hold 100 molecules of water. The 40 molecules that we put into the terrarium atmosphere hasn't gone anywhere for this example, but there are only 40 molecules out of a total of 100 in the air that our terrarium could hold. This means relative humidity is now only 40% or nowhere near what we wanted it to be. So what do we do? 
well, we'll mist or fog again and bring up the humidity to where we want it. Back to the reptile room. So we just saw what happens throughout the day as the temperature goes up and the relative humidity comes down. But what happens in the evening as the temperature starts to come back down for the day? Well, all that water that was in the air has to go somewhere and we see it right here through condensation. And condensation is incredibly important, especially for number four on our list. All of this talk about humidity is great info, but why do we even care about it? Well, it's number four. Humidity is critical to the health of so many of the reptiles and amphibians that we love to keep. From chameleons like these guys to dart frogs, we have to get humidity right. Tim, tell us why. Okay, so for our chameleons, like these canopy chameleons here, humidity is vital to so many of their life processes. From shedding to helping with digestion, even keeping their eyes the correct moisture. But most importantly, their lungs are especially adapted to their humid environment, and not having enough water in the air can actually make their lungs dry out, which prevents them from breathing and getting enough oxygen in their system. Another animal that directly relies on humidity, and many of us like to keep it, are dart frogs, like these tricolors we have here. They don't actually drink their water in the way that you think of. You'll notice that their skin looks a little bit different than many reptile and amphibian species, and that's because it can actually absorb water directly through it. Believe it or not, dart frogs drink through their skin and through their lungs. They need the high humidity in their atmosphere to be able to do that. They can't do it just through having a bowl of water or a place to swim. There's even more species that rely on humidity in a unique way, and it's not the humidity in the air but the condensation that humidity causes as the air cools down every evening. You'll notice on a lot of animals that come from a desert environment, like bearded dragons, often their heads are shaped like little funnels. In the evening, when the air can't hold all the water it did during the day, some of that extra water condenses like dew right on the bodies of our little reptile friends. Their heads are shaped this way so that it can funnel those little drops of water that came out of the air as it cooled right into their mouths to drink. Now you'll notice that even for these desert animals, humidity can be important, and that is because of the most important of all facts on our list today, number five. Number five on this list is the most confused and most misunderstood of all. And it's why spray bottles like this one may be a good idea to consider replacing. What's number five? Humidity and rainfall are completely independent of one another. When we mist with a bottle like this, what are we really doing? Well, we're actually simulating rainfall. Rainfall comes when clouds form and they can't hold their water anymore, and rain falls down giving us big drops of water and standing water on the ground. Isn't that what our mister bottle creates? Let's think back to our desert animals to show that humidity and rainfall are not directly related. In Dubai, we know it's the middle of the desert, and it receives only about three inches of rainfall in an entire year. Now, you would think that with no rain, there'd be no humidity. After all, it's a desert. But in Dubai, it's exactly the opposite. The average humidity in the winter is as much as 60%, and in the summer, it can be over 90%. That's a lot of water in the air. And the animals that live in these humid deserts are completely adapted to having no rainfall, but lots of humidity. Even in a rainforest or a tropical terrarium, it's important that we think of humidity and rainfall as two separate events. Many tropical terrariums have a rainy and a dry season. Now, even in the more dry season for the animals like dart frogs that live there, there has to be high humidity in the air. So how do we take care of this in our terrariums? Well, we think one of the best things you can do is replace this spray bottle with a fogger. Why is that? Well, when you look at the droplets that these spray bottles make, you'll see they look a lot like raindrops. Now let's compare that to the fine mist coming out of this fogger. It's clear that these foggers are much better at providing fog that evaporates directly into the air. So by using a fogger like this rather than spraying, we can more accurately control the humidity level in our terrarium through the course of a day without having to put a lot of standing water which could flood our substrate. By setting more fogging events throughout the day with a fogger like this one, 
that has automatic timing, we're able to perfectly control the humidity in our terrariums and keep it completely independent from our rainfall cycle, which is critical because that is exactly what you would see in nature. The more nature-like we can be, the happier our amazing animals will be. Keep an eye out for our future videos where we go even more in depth into some of the species we mentioned and the best ways to keep them in a natural environment at home. With those five important humidity facts that you just learned, I really hope you'll be able to be the best reptile and amphibian keeper you can be.